The eucalyptus lined avenue all the way to the end, this time at dusk, under the sign of two disturbing thoughts. One, that nature is ceasing to be nature for us in the old sense of the word, when it represented harmony and peace. Two, that man is ceasing to be man in the old sense of the word, when he felt himself to be a harmonious part of nature. The twilight hour is incredible. There is such an imperceptible and inevitable evaporation of form. It is preceded by a moment of enormous clarity, as if form were resisting, didn't want to give in. The clarity of everything is tragic, persistent, even frenzied. Right after the moment when the object becomes itself most concrete, alone and left to itself, without the play of light and shadow in which it luxuriated until now, a more pervasive weakening, evaporation of matter follows. Lines and blots join, causing a tiring blur. Contours put up no resistance. The outlines, in dying, become difficult, incomprehensible. There is a general retreat, withdrawal, a sinking into growing complexity. Before the actual coming of darkness, the shape becomes stronger once more, but not with the power of what we see, but with the power of what we know about it. The cry proclaiming its presence is now merely theoretical, after which there is a mixing of everything. Blackness pours out of holes, thickens in space, and matter becomes darkness, nothing, night. I groped my way home. I walked hard and stiff straight ahead, drowned in unseen, absolutely certain that I was a demon, an anti-horse, anti-tree, anti-nature, a being from elsewhere, a newcomer, foreigner, alien, a phenomenon not of this world, of another world, the human world. I returned completely unaware that somewhere, close by, was a terrifying dog, crouching, ready to lunge for the throat, pinned to the wall. But enough, for now. Friday, the generation awaits us, so we should brace ourselves for today. I do not deny that someday, science may lead us to paradise. Until that day, However, we are threatened by a series of operations, deforming, almost surgical interventions, which is what happens to patients who are subjected to only three introductory operations in a series of 12 that are supposed to improve their faces. The transformation of these conditions of our lives, as well as of our psychophysical structure with the help of technology, knock us out of our groove and unsettle us. Monday. I am not a brute. I am not looking for a street fight, nor am I ranting, scaring, exaggerating in demagogic flight. No, I am not exaggerating. I have always sought strength in moderation. I am not losing sight of the fact that science, even though it is inhuman, is our hope that even though it warps, it also saves us from a thousand warpings, that even though it is a cruel mother, it is also a caring one, that this curse of ours is also our blessing. I am talking art into kicking smack, but not so that the professor feels kicked, but for the artist to feel that he is the one doing the kicking. I am not seeking to crush science, but to restore art to its own life in full counter-distinction. 